I know he's teasing because I'm, I'm, I'm old. I have seven grandkids, so. Yes, be nice to us grandmothers. Yeah, but <laughs> um, Some of you know that um, I actually live in Amarillo. Uh oh, oh, sorry. Some of you know I actually live in Amarillo, Texas. And um, when I talk to my husband, the only thing he wants to know is when is what flight are you catching and when are you coming back? <laughs> so my. Um, my husband is a long-haul truck driver, that's why you've not met him. <coughs> He's a trainer, and so um, every six weeks he has a new trainee, and so I always have to pray that the person's not going to fall asleep at the wheel. Or... Oh, goodness. I met one trainer um, in uh, Trotdale, and um, he was telling me the trainee took the truck right through the lobby of a hotel. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not a good thing to tell the wife of a train. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to tell you just briefly, I have a, my baby's 29, and I have a, a son that is almost, in a couple weeks, he will be 31, and my daughter will be 32 the next day. She is a diesel mechanic. I don't even know how to check my oil, change my tire. <laughs> yeah. um, she joined in when she was uh, the Army, when she was 17 and 2000. So, um, praise God for keeping my daughter safe. Amen. Amen. I wanted to um, speak on the brokenhearted, and as I was really praying and asking the Lord, actually I want to stop right here, and I want to um, ask God to bless His Word. Yes, amen. You don't need to hear anything spoken if it has not been anointed, if, amen. It, hasn't, if it didn't come from the throne of God. You don't even need to hear it. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I ask that your spirit, which I already feel so strong, that it would come and that it would just breathe upon your word, which, which God, I just ask God that it would um, speak to every heart. God, speak to every heart and bring healing this night. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Some of you know this is my dad, Glenn. Dad, can you wave your arms so they know this? <laughs> well, um, and Roger's my brother on the drums. And, well, I get to tell you that um, sometimes my dad and I are asked to speak together. And depending on which one of us is first, the other one is usually left with about seven minutes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of... <laughs> are you ready? So we kind of we kind of fight over who's going to get the mic the first. For a few minutes, and um, God is so amazing. You know what? As I was um, really thinking, God on this subject, I read some different books written by people who um, are so anointed. And the conclusion that I came to is that there's not one of us that couldn't write a book about the things that we've been through. Amen. The difference is the difference is that will our book end? With the fact that we came to surrender, did we? Will it end with us surrendering every hurt and every disappointment to the Lord? Yes. Or will it end with us continuing to take the steering wheel of our lives and not wanting to surrender that over to God? Because every one of us, there is a destiny that God has for us, but it is up to us if we will surrender and if we are willing to just say, God, I give you. Everything I am, everything that I have, Father God, I just yes. give it to you, knowing that you are able, more than able, than we could ever ask or think. Above all, you are able. And I just want to praise him. You know what? Um, I debated on um, whether or not I should share um, some of the things that God has brought me through, and I will only briefly touch on them. Um, I was married 17 years, my first marriage. And um, to this day, I honestly do not know why he divorced me. To this day, I don't. Um, um, I got married a week after my 18th birthday. And um, he had a lot of friends that wanted him to go out and drink and do those kinds of things. And that was never part of my lifestyle. And so I think I was just kind of um, boring, I guess. I don't know. But, but you know what? Um, I'm here to tell you that in the midst of 
hurt and pain. And in the midst of um, sleeping in my car, he emptied all the bank accounts. You don't, and that doesn't matter. But anyway, I am telling you that God is our strength. And that's all I have to hang on to. That's all I have to hang on to is that God is my strength and he is my portion. And no matter what, what we're facing, there was times that I honestly thought maybe God was in the Bahamas and he forgot about me. <laughs> really? I'm, I, I did. And, and I'm telling you that he is. He is our everything. And when I quit complaining and finally said, God, you know what? I was going to give this to you. I may not understand what's happening. I, I may not like it. And I even told the judge, I want no part of this. No part of this at all. And he said, I'm sorry. You're in the state of Washington. I have to grant it. So... But I'm here to tell you that I am a walking testimony and you are a walking testimony. And God wants to strengthen you and encourage you right where you're at. Amen. I have some scriptures that I wrote down. I wanted to start. Dad, I'm going to pick on you tonight and Teddy. Okay, amen. Um, so the first scripture I wanted to start with is John 19:34, And I'm wondering if I can pick on my dad. Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no discussion, I guess. Wow. Uh, John 1934. 19, 19, John. Hallelujah. <laughs> that kind of picked on me. I wasn't quite sure what how it was going to manifest. That's John 1934. Oh, 34 or 44? 34. Oh, was I supposed to write down 44? Oh, I, 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 I see. There is no 44. Sorry, 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. Okay, Jesus. So, so you may read it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so let me start with 33 if I may. Um, yes. But when, when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. What they say is that they can scientifically prove that Jesus died with a broken heart because the blood and the water was separated. And to, I mean, we are talking about our mighty Savior that died for each and every one of us and, and his heart was so broken because he carried every one of our pain. All of our pain, all of our shame, all of our sins. He carried it. He did it all. He took it all. Yes. He took it all. And, and you know what? Sometimes I think that um, the people think the gospel is so oversimplified. you got to be kidding me. All I have to do is ask him in my heart, and he's going to forgive me of my sins and, and all of these things. Yeah, pretty much. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. We're talking about a free gift that cannot be purchased cannot be purchased, but it's priceless. Yeah. It is priceless. Yeah. Let me tell you um, okay. that I was raised from the day, time I was three <coughs> in church. Okay, I have a point to this. And I have seen it all. I have seen it all. I've seen the hypocrites. I've seen people that have tore my parents' heart out and hurt them deeply. And they were supposed to be Christians. Yeah. I've seen it all. I have. I have seen it all. I'm ancient. I'm 51. <laughs> and I want to tell you that the day came that I had to decide for myself that I am not accepting Christ because mom and dad made me go to church and sometimes I would have much rather been with my friends I'm being honest the truth is that I saw people healed I saw people walk that I knew for years had, had been in wheelchairs or been on crutch, in crutches I saw too much. I saw too much with my own eyes to question whether or not he heals and to question or not whether he is real and question whether or not he changes lives. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. So 
So if you're making an excuse and you're saying, I want nothing to do with the hypocritical Christians, I am telling you, there's always room for one more of us. <laughs> there's always one room for, there's room for one more of us. And God loves us just the way we are. Yes. He purchased everything for us just the way we are. The next verse I have is Isaiah. Can I pick on Teddy? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. The next verse I have is Isaiah 51.3. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh. Now, 51.3. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And He will make her wilderness like Eden. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall he be found therein. Let me read that one more time. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. God wants to heal. God wants to heal. Every, I'm telling you, I have, um, of my three kids, I have a son, um, it's kind of funny, my, my ex-husband asked, Oh, we talked about Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, he's a very pessimistic person. And one day my son said from the back seat, um, Dad, am I ever going get, to get to meet my Uncle Sam? You're always talking about Uncle <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And little did we know that he'd go to work for him, for Uncle Sam. But my oldest daughter, I just want to praise him because... Um, I don't even know, you won't even know what you've done to irritate my oldest daughter, and she's not talking to you. Just, I mean, not even talking to you. And I want to praise him because, because since I've been here, I came here, I had to have a hysterectomy, and I wanted to be near my family. <coughs> All the way from Amarillo, Texas, to come here to be near my family. And God has healed, He has so healed my relationship with my oldest daughter. Uh. And I am, I am, like, she actually texted me the last time we had dinner together, and I brought the ice cream, my grandkids loved it. Anyway, and she actually thanked me for coming. I mean, going from not even speak, speaking to me for two years to thank you, Mom, for coming. That is my God. That's what I'm talking about. And, and when my daughter was deployed, it was her, um, one of the hardest things for me was, was the communication in and out when someone's killed or someone is wounded in the army? It, it stops. It completely stops. You don't know which it is. Someone's gotten, someone's killed or someone's wounded. You get to guess, and you can't reach that your the soldier that you've been able to email. You can forget it. It's it's gone. Communication. And um, one night I was crying and I was praying and. I saw Jesus on a cross. He showed me this. He said, you're her mother and you love her? You talk this. And I saw him up on that cross with his arms outstretched. And I saw that blood as it was flowing out of him. And when he said to me, you're her mother and you love her, you top that. Wow. And I couldn't. And I couldn't. I don't know how parents... Who, or, or people who go through such hardship can go through it without Christ. I don't know how they do it. If they can't draw their strength on Jesus, I do not know. I do not know how they can go through some of the things they go through. But I have good news for you. We have a Savior. We have a Savior that is here tonight to meet your needs, to, to heal your broken heart, your hurts, the disappointments, everything that we have been through. God wants you to know that He's here tonight to minister life to you. Yes. That you are not alone. You are not alone. Some of you may feel like I'm stuck with the people. I don't even like the person I share my bunk with my, my, in the room. I don't even like the dude. He smells. He snores. Whatever. Whatever. I want you to know that God brought you here. God brought you here. Because, because He wants to do something in and through your life that you can never do for yourself. And that goes for every one of us. That goes for every one of us. Our God is able. He is able. I have another scripture. Um, Dad, can I get you to go from to Isaiah 42, 16? 
16. What page is that? What one does it? <laughs> Isaiah 42, verse 16. Please, what page is that? <laughs> he is so honoring. Now, if you if you spend any time with my dad, especially, it, it, he does this. My mom is very serious, very quiet. You will never hear a peep out of her. You go to a restaurant with my dad, and the waitress will come and gracefully put things in front of you, and she'll look up at her, and he'll say, you're doing pretty good for a girl. <laughs> Sometimes I want to crawl under a table or say I've never met him. I've never seen him in my entire life. He's just being funny. But sometimes the look on their face, I just can almost feel them putting their their hands around them. <laughs> Amen. Feel the love. Yes, it is. Feel the love. I lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are things I will do. I will not forsake them. Amen. Amen. Our God is so mighty. Our God is so mighty. I have to tell you, my youngest daughter was a runaway at 16. And um, I was the mom that put the posters out and cried myself to sleep. For seven months, not one word, not one word. And I felt like I was dying. I felt like I was dying. And my daughter ended up with this guy 11 years older than her. She ran away. When I saw her again, she was four months pregnant. They took off again. And, now, and then my daughter ended up in Amarillo, Texas, of all places. God, please help us. Yeah. Anyway, and my daughter... My daughter, um, while I was there on a visit, it was two days ago, um, my daughter was diagnosed with cervical cancer while she was pregnant. Oh, wow. And so that is why I moved to Amarillo, Texas. Now, I don't know if anybody in here has ever been to Amarillo, Texas. Yeah, I have. It is the flattest. Yep. It's like a pancake. It's, yeah. it's, it's like a pancake. If there's a tree, someone planted it there. There is no, there is no rivers, there is no streams, there is no oceans, there is no nothing. It is the most, I'm trying to figure out why they picked that spot and said, let's start a town here. I know what we'll do, we'll start a town here. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what, but he, in my first year of being there, I complained to God every day. I wanted to know where I drew the short straw and how I could go back and fix it. That's all I wanted to know. And everything there is fixed into in y'all. And I and, um, actually had a lady ask me. Um, I was at Walmart, and she actually asked me. Um, now, we're sitting at the meat. I'm looking at the hamburger. She's looking at the brisket. She says to me, now, when you make your brisket, da 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 and she's asking me this question. I said, ma'am, you could have asked anyone in this store but me. <laughs> I have never made a brisket in my life. I like it. <laughs> But I have never made a brisket in my life. I am telling you. But you know what? After that first year of me complaining and complaining and complaining, and I finally came to that place where I surrendered. And I said, God, no, I don't like it here. No, this is the last place on earth I would want to be. And God healed my daughter of stage 3 cancer. That's the God I'm talking about. They couldn't even operate until after she had the baby. And my God healed my daughter Amen. of stage 3 cancer. But I am telling you, it wasn't until I surrendered and I said, God, I'm going to quit complaining. I'm going to quit complaining. And everything changed for me. No, it is still not my favorite place to be. No, I don't really want to live there. But I'm telling you what. God began to open up doors. God began to move in my life. and give me, He would give me, like Sherby's talking about divine appointments. I get them all the time. I'm, my mom says I'm most dangerous in the frozen food section. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter where I am. It's not that I look for them. But God, I recognize His voice. I recognize His spirit. And God will send me to people. And it doesn't matter if we're in the frozen food section. It doesn't matter where we are. One time it was in the bug aisle. I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding. When they, these little tiny miniature ants, they're called sugar ants. I know that now. And, um, and I buy these ant traps, Well, the, those hotels, you know. Well, the problem is I notice that they're so tiny they can't even get their little feet. 
they can't even get their little feet up on those hotels to be invited in. And I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't getting anywhere. So here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm on the bug aisle. And I'm looking for a little miniature hotel. And this lady, she's minding her own business. She's walking down the main aisle. And I grabbed her and I said, ma'am, you got to help me out. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I don't even know what these bugs are called. And she told me. <laughs> and um, she turned to walk away. And, and by the way, they didn't even have what I was looking for. She told me I was going to have to go to help her. But anyway, um, and she turned to walk away. And I said, wait a minute, I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you. And I stopped her. And God began to speak through me. And she said, today, today, I'm going through so much. I'm going through so much today. I said, God, I don't care where it is or how you do it. I need a word from you today. She said, I never expected it would be on the bug aisle. <laughs> My God is that mighty. That's the kind of God that we serve. He can heal the brokenhearted. There's those of you, you're worrying about your children, you're worrying about your family, you're worrying about all of these things, and I am telling you that He is the one that can take it. Amen. He Amen. is the Amen. one that can take it. Yes. He is the one. He is the one. My daughter sent me an email when she, was, when she was over in Iraq. One of her deployments, she did three. In fact, my son-in-law is in Afghanistan right now. And... She said, Mom, can you send, my, my husband had been real sick, so he'd missed a lot of work, and money was really, really tight. And I'm a coupon clipper anyway. And, and my daughter asked me, can you just send me, can you just send me some, she wanted beef jerky. She wanted, um, now I knew they didn't have any cows over there, so I didn't know why she wanted the cold cereal, but she did. She wanted uh, Captain Crunch, and she wanted... Um, some other things and I'm like God I have no money to send my daughter anything it is back then and this has been a few years back it was three dollars for every pound every single pound and then you had to sell it just special so none of the bugs or whatever he and my daughter my daughter was even wearing dog collars on her ankles because the ants or not the ants but the um they have Sand spiders. They have sand bugs over there that are just what you wanted me to talk about, huh? Mm -hmm. Anyway, and I'm telling you that God, God, I, I got a hold of one of the TV stations, one of the newspapers, one of the, some of the radio stations, and I'm telling you, we called it Mount Iraq. It was a, it was a pile of stuff. Over a thousand pounds we sent without a dollar. Without a dollar. Every dollar was donated. Every single item donated. Over wow. a thousand pounds. And I remember I was in my bedroom crying and weeping because I had a pile of stuff. Over 200 pounds. And I'm like, God, this stuff doesn't belong in the United States. It doesn't belong here. And I was literally weeping on my knees before God. And one of the TV stations called and they said, we just want to know how you're doing. And I said, you want to know how I'm doing? I've been crying out to God. I've got to get this stuff to Iraq. And he said, ma'am, we'll be there in two hours. Uh -oh. We will be there in two hours. <laughs> a dentist sent a check for $500. Another person uh -huh. sent a, gave us a $500 gift certificate for Costco. And people were just donating money. It was amazing. My God is the He answers prayers. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. Not only is He here to heal your broken heart, but He is here to answer prayers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to um, Luke 4. Dad, can I bug you? Luke chapter 4, 18 through 19. Uh, yeah, you're gonna do it anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's been bugging me since she was born. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you love it. I tried to read my newspaper and she crawls right in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that's your worst issue with her, you're doing okay. <laughs> I met her last night. She was in it. You <laughs> don't want to get him started. Do you? <laughs> Apparently not. She was born. They slapped her mother. Damn. <laughs> 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 
I'm gonna pray for you guys after church. We're gonna get along with her. We're gonna have to hold hands. Okay. Yeah. Let's pretend. Here the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners Amen. and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, oh, 19? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that was 19. <laughs> proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Yeah. Amen. Okay, you know, you're going to be going. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I think you skipped the line though. Mine says he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I didn't hear you say that. I don't know. Uh, Does yours say that? Cover his private line. Let's see. 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 Let's so um, blessed to to have met Sherby. I know some of you heard the story how we met Sherby. Sherby was minding his own business, and we were we went to go see a friend that some friends of ours from San Diego, and and um, I didn't even know that Sherby was going to be there. And Sherby was talking about how he wanted to have some quiet time, just him and the Lord walking around this nice property, and and here came my brother Roger chasing him down and he had a word from the Lord and I didn't even know Sherby I'd never seen him I didn't know my brother had had a word for him and um, and so um, it was it was kind of a shock to him that here I'm he'd already heard the word of the Lord from my brother and then he meets me and and I don't even know what I said to confirm everything but you know what the one one of the reasons I just love Sherby so much is his heart for worship Mm -hmm. It's hard for worship. Worship is the place where we're healing. That's, that is that is that is where we're going to receive healing. Amen. We've got to be in the Word. We've got to be in praise and yes. worship before Him. Yes. And as we do, and we come before Him like a little child, we just come before Him mm -hmm. and we wait upon Him. He'll meet us. Yes, That's where He's going to meet us. He's going to meet us right there. Right where we live. He already knows your heart. You don't have to worry about coming up with some fancy prayer. Some long, long, long prayer. He already knows before you ask. But ask. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I mean, did you go on really quick? Thank you, Jesus. God, you are so good. You are so good. Yes, bless you, Lord. Yes, amen. Sorry, um, Hallelujah. Can I ask Teddy? Yeah. I'm gonna stick with Teddy for now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's safer. It's just safer. <laughs> Romans 10, verse 15, please. Romans 10, verse Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 10, 15, yes. Okay. That explains why she's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Yes. So, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of God of good things. And bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Amen. Can I also ask you to read John 14, 26? Okay. Yeah. 14, 26. All right. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, when the Father will send, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Yes. Amen. All things. Yes. All, all things. things. Yes. All things. All things. The Bible says that all things were together for good to those yes. who love Him and are called according to His purposes. Our God is able. Our God is so able. I'm telling you. 
It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what you're facing. I just want to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I ask you to read 1 Peter 5 7 for me? 1 Peter 5 7. First Peter five seven. Yes. <clears throat> Casting all in your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. Yes. Amen. He does. Yes. He does. He cares for you. He cares for you. Amen. You matter. If you were the only one that would have been on that would have he would have died on the cross for just for you. Yes. For every single one of us. His love is amazing. I asked God, please, I have been so sick. And I, I said, God, if there's ever been a day that I need you, it's today. And I don't have much of a voice, but I wanted to sing a song. And I don't want my brother to help me because he gets irritated that I don't keep the rhythm. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep the rhythm the way I want to keep it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be it unto me according to your word. My heart responds to thee. Amen. Let there be a performance of all that you have spoken for nothing is impossible with God Amen. Amen. be it unto me according to your word my heart responds to thee let there be a performance of all that you have spoken. For nothing is impossible with God. There's a song. There's a, um, there's a song that my mother always asked me to sing, and it's so hard for me, but... I really feel like that if I could wind up everything, it would be with this song. The Bible talks about the woman with the alabaster box. She was a prostitute. And Jesus, Jesus stepped in when they were going to stone her. And she came, she came with the alabaster box that was... It was an ointment that the bride would put on her body before she'd get married. And it was the, the wages of, the equivalent of a year's wages. The equivalent of a year's wages. And she anointed Jesus. And, and the Bible says that she wiped. She began to cry and weep. And she would wash his feet with her tears and dry them, those tears, with the head of her hair. She appreciated, she appreciated everything he had done for her. She, he actually spared her life. He spared her life. That's what he's done for us. Amen. So, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to get another drink of water, because this is a hard song for me. Help me, Lord. <laughs> there came a woman unto Jesus, and in her hand she held an alabaster box, and with much brokenness of heart. That day she poured out the ointment at his feet 
And she said, I will pour out my life at your feet. I will pour out my life at your feet as an offering of love and worship unto thee. And I will wash your feet with my tears and dry them with the hairs of my head as an offering of love and worship unto thee as an offering of love and worship unto thee Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I'm asking when I'm and thank you so much, Lord, hold my voice. When I'm asking if you're here tonight and you've been carrying, you've been carrying so many hearts. You've been carrying whether it's your family, it's your children, it's your spouse, it's whatever it is. I'm going to ask you right now. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your chair and come and stand right here with me. I'm going to ask every single person, every single person, you need God to heal you, to touch you, to heal your broken heart. I'm asking you to stand right here. I'm also asking you to stand right here if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord and been willing to surrender everything, everything to Him. I am also asking you to come and stand right here with me. We're going to pray together and God is going to move. Amen. God is going to move. God is going to move. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. And I just praise Him for helping me tonight. I just praise Him. I just praise Him. He is mighty. He is mighty. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. His name is the name above all names. He is worthy to be praised. I just wanted to share with you. I don't even need to go through all the stuff the Lord's brought me through, and even the most recent one, my son's going into treatment, and so mm -hmm. that's a big one. But when I was praying and worshiping not too long ago, I, you know, was crying and feeling all the how all the dirtiness of being a human and all the mistakes we made, the messes we made. <clears throat> And, and how can how can he even look to see to help you out? And, and suddenly I was sitting under a tree and just kind of the dirt like it is up in Wenatchee where I'm from and all the dust and everything. And I was a little girl and my dress was all dirty and my face had the, all the dust on it. And then when you cry, it's mud. Cool. And I looked over and and it was, Jesus was sitting on a rock and there was all these kids in front of him. And some of them had turned around kind of, and I could recognize it was like my brother when he was little, and people I knew out there. And I, I just continued to cry, thinking, well, I can't go over there, I'm all dirty, and they're clean. And Jesus looked up at me, and he said, you have to draw near for me to wash your face. Mm -hmm. And we have to draw near. And when I went over and sat next to him, he wiped away, and I was clean like the other kids. I know it's getting late, so I wanted to share just one more thing. 
my husband, I've never, although drugs and alcohol has never been a part of my life, it's been very much a part of my husband's life. And so my husband decided that we were going to let some people come in and live with us that were trying to get off drugs and alcohol. And that was very different for me. I I had some cough syrup up in the cupboard and it had the coating in it. And I'm not thinking that I need to go through my cupboards and throw things away. Or I forgot all about the prescription. And we let a man named Eric come and live with us. And, and so um, the first thing that Eric did after he moved in, he went to some friends and got high on heroin. Oh my God. Mm. Then the second thing he did, um, I was supposed to drop him off at this Christian church that had kind of an AA meeting. And I said, well, I have to pick up some medicine for my husband. And he said, well, as a matter of fact, I need some medicine. Well, my husband had been hit by a semi. Well, he was at a loading dock in Renton. Almost killed him. Well, Eric knew what medications my husband was on. So I dropped him off at this church for the AA meeting. I wasn't paying any attention. What he did is he took my the bag that I had for my husband, and he switched it for his medication. And so I was making dinner, and the phone rang, and it was the church, and they, they said, one of you better come back and get this guy. He is higher than a kite. And he admitted that um, when Brenda dropped, off, dropped him off, that he purposely switched the bags of medications, and somebody better come get him. So I'm standing in the kitchen cooking, and in myself I'm thinking, dude, that is three strikes. That is three strikes. Let me help you pack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm being honest, okay? That is three. Let me help you pack. And I'm standing there in the kitchen, and I'm crying out to God. I'm like, God, I don't even know what to do with this guy. I mean, I've, I mean, I've opened up my home. I don't ask for anything. And every time I turn around, he's doing one thing after another after another. I have had it up to here. God is so cool because He'll just speak to you. And he'll just He'll just let you know that you know what you you don't have you you don't know everything. You just don't know everything. So I'm standing in the kitchen. So all of a sudden God spoke to me and He said, "Oh really? Oh really? So you decided this is three strikes. He's out. Really? Really? Did you ask me?" I'm like, "No, no, God, I I didn't ask you." And He said, all of a sudden He showed me. This was the most amazing thing. He showed me this giant, this giant, I'm talking about like 60 feet high, this ruler. And it was like it went from my kitchen right where I was standing all the way up into the sky. And I'm like, whoa. And he goes, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a Sharpie. This is my love. This is my grace. This is my mercy. This is my forgiveness. It goes from here, clear up there. He goes, I want you to take a Sharpie. And I want you to put a dot where your start. Mm -hmm. where your love, your forgiveness, your mercy, your grace, I want you to show me on my ruler where your love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, all that stuff even starts. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find where I could even start my thought. Because <coughs> it didn't measure. It wasn't on there. It wasn't on there. That's the God we serve. That is the God that we serve. Amen. And I love him so very much. And it has been my honor to come tonight. And I thank him for helping me with my voice. And I just praise him for the opportunity. And if I could, I would hug every single one of you. Even even this one here that was trying to fall asleep on me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I get to tell you a really quick story. My dad, my dad used to speak at Teen Challenge over in Portland, and and I came all the way from Seattle. I came all the way from Seattle, and I'm sitting in the very back. I'm sitting in the very back, and I know my dad. He's Henri, and this dude. I don't know when he came into the program, but he had not met my dad, and so this dude starts to starts to doze off, and I'm like, Oh no, dude, you don't want to do that. <laughs> And so I was wondering how long it was going to take for my dad to take note. It was pretty quick. And, and so, Dad, you tell them the verse that you... That you... Well, Romans 8. 
Romans 8, yeah. yeah. So tell them how you did that. Well, I said, I get real quiet and calm, you know, which is unlike me, and I go, what can separate us from the love of God? <laughs> can tribulation, can trial, can famine, can nakedness, can peril, can sword? No! <laughs> God wants you to stir up the things of the Spirit. God wants you to stir yourself up. <clears throat> the enemy is trying to get you to settle down. And surgically, the difference between settle down and stir up are exactly the opposite. God wants you to say to him, 
I want to know you. I want to know your word. I want to know your spirit. And I want to be used of you greater than anyone has ever, 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 ever known you or your word or your spirit. I want to know you. I want you to move in my life in reality. I want you to move in power. He, he wants to take you up past that ceiling, brother. He wants to take you past what you think is the boundaries and what's the borders. He wants to cause a breakthrough in your life. And he wants to use you to cause breakthroughs in others' lives. And the only way that's going to happen is you, you have to aim past the board to break it, brother. You've got to aim past the bar, past the board. God wants more than you. He has, yeah. you, he has placed so much within you, Amen. and he wants a return. Yeah, you, right. you have leadership, brother. Like <laughs> You have leadership. You, you have the ability to draw people. You, you have a gift. Of people follow you, they look to you. Man, this guy, man, there's something about him. He knows what he's talking about. He, he's got experience. And God wants to use that in a greater realm. He wants you to take that rod, if I can borrow this. He wants he wants to take that rod that Moses had that that was <laughs> that he used to shepherd sheep. And he wants you to lay that down. And when you lay it down in the Holy of Holies and you pick it back up, it's shepherding people. God wants to take everything He's given you that is physical abilities. He wants to turn it into a ministry. He wants to turn it into something He can use to affect His kingdom. He yes, wants to use yes, you. Yes. He wants to use you. Amen. Amen. And He wants you to no longer limit yourself. He wants you to no longer limit yourself. Thank you. He wants you to no longer limit yourself. Lord, I just ask you in the name of Jesus, seal your words over my brother. Yes. From yes, the soles yes. of His feet to the top of His head, a greater mantle, a greater anointing another notch so let it be written so let it be done in Jesus name you're not even going to be the same from this night on you are not it's your turn it's your floor I guess she's getting something hallelujah <laughs> I noticed. I want you guys. Okay, I want you guys. Okay, I want you guys. And I noticed the ones that when there's an altar call or something, there are some of you that are so out that door. There, there are some of you that are so out the door. I mean, the minute this this is dismissed, poof. Like, I mean, just like a bunch of bees. And you're one of them. <laughs> no, you're quick. From the time I met you, from the first time I met you, you have been on my heart. From the first time I met you. Do you remember that I stopped you? We were out in the parking lot minding your own business, and this strange lady walked up to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? If you really let people get to know you, do you know what they're going to they're gonna find out about you? They're going to find out that you're an awesome dude. That's what they're going to find out. That you are loving. That you are caring. You're a little bit on the stubborn side, but that's okay. Amen. Dude, you are smart. Sometimes for your own good. You're too smart for your own good. God brought you here. Yes, he did. God yes, he did. brought you here to strengthen you, to encourage you. And you know what? Even the ones that ruffle your feathers, and there are some, God can give you a love for people like never before. Because where you have been, you have an ability to speak to others and tell them, don't go that way. Don't do that. I was there. I've made those mistakes. God wants to use you. And he wants to fill your mouth with his words. God wants to fill you with his presence. You have been through so much. Can I be honest? It's like you have these little, you know how those porcupines, they got these little pricklies. And it's, don't touch me, don't bug me, don't. God wants to pull those little pricklies right out. And I'm not saying that you're not living and that you're not, that you're not caring. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you've been through so much stuff. You've been through so much stuff and I didn't bring you up here to embarrass you. I can already feel my, your hands around my neck. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Why don't you come help me pray for him? I have brought you that I might bring drink that I might bring you deeper yes. into a place with me, says the Lord. I love you with an everlasting love. And I have seen every hurt and then I've seen every disappointment. One of the things I said to you is, dude, I don't even know you. You shouldn't even be breathing today. And what I meant by that was God was showing me there are times that he has stepped in to spare your life. And you were telling me, you were telling me about your twin, right? Yeah. Your twin. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know you. And I give him praise that he even shows me things about people I've never met, never seen. You were telling me about your twin that didn't make it. God wants to heal that hurt. It's been, God wants to heal that hurt. He wants to come in and feel that pain that you've carried your entire life. God wants to bring restoration to your family. Yes, yes. He wants to touch and move in your family, your very precious family. You just want to know if he's real and if he really hears your prayers. And I'm here to tell you, yes, he does. He's going to bring ministry out of your weaknesses, not your strengths, your weaknesses. Because then you're going to know it's Him that did it. He's going to cause circumstances to come to pass that's going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around for you. And in the very areas that are, you would think would be least likely for Him to touch, those are the areas He's going to touch. And out of your weaknesses is going to come strength. It's going to come ministry. It's going to come power. It's going to come anointing. Yes. Fire. It's going to come out of those weak areas. Then you're going to know the Lord of hosts is who has done it. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to be a miracle. It's not going to be very long before it happens. So let me see. So let me die. So I know it's getting the lane, and I know that the ones that are in a really quick hurry to get out the door are still going to be in a really quick hurry to get out the door. So I'm going to ask one more time: Is there anyone who needs prayer tonight? Is there anyone? Thank you, Jesus. The first thing that God is saying to me is He wants you to know that you matter. life that you have been you have felt held back you have been you have felt like you've been passed over time and time again someone else has picked but not you God wants to heal you of all the hurts and all the disappointments God wants to heal your broken heart and set you free in fact God says that he is still going to change you tonight people are not going to even recognize you anymore He's going to touch you from the top of your precious head to the soles of your precious feet. <coughs> he wants to strengthen you and let you know how loved and how precious that you are. I don't even know how you sleep. It's like your mind is always going. Like a computer that never gets turned off. Mm -hmm. You're just always thinking, always thinking. Yeah, brother. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> and I need you over here. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're filling him with your joy. Thank you that you're filling him with your peace. Thank you that you're filling him with strength. God, thank you that you are his hope. That you are his everything. I praise you that he came up tonight, God. God, I praise you that he has a love for you. That he's a very caring and kind person. Father God, I speak healing in his body from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. say a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will not despise. And he that cometh unto me that hungereth and thirsteth for righteousness shall be filled with that which the Lord doeth. And the key word I hear for you is expectancy. Cry out to the Lord to give you expectancy so you can expect him to move in new and fresh ways, new and fresh avenues. Isaiah 43 19 says, Behold, I do a new thing, saith the Lord. Now it springs forth, shall you not know it. Streams in the desert. Amen? So ask the Lord to bring you new and fresh things. Ask Him to create in you a heart of expectancy. Amen? Amen. Say, create in me, Lord, a heart of expectancy. To expect you to move, expect you to move in new, in new and fresh ways. Fresh ways. Yes. Amen. Amen. And be in the Word in a new and fresh way. More than you've ever been. More than you've ever been. You know, sometimes it's hard. It's hard on the flesh to get in the Word and stay there. Uh, but but sometimes that's okay too because you can read it and you can set it down. But then come back. Then come back in about a half hour and pick it up again and say, okay. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep at this. I, I get bored or, or my mind gets boggled or whatever. I'll set it down. But you know what? By your grace, I'm going to come back. I'm going to pick it up again. I'm going to read for another 15 minutes. I'm going to read for another 15 minutes. Amen? We used to sing a song, I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of His great love, rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus. So I'll give him more of me. Amen? Amen. So that's what he wants. The more you give him to himself, to him, the more he's got to give of himself to you. You got a copy, come on. Amen. Roger that. Roger that. Roger that. Roger that. Okay. Roger that. Thank you so much, Pastor Shirley. Lena. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Lena, you are a worry word. <laughs> a big W. I'm, I'm telling you, God wants to touch you. You are so beautiful and amazing and gifted. Oh my goodness, you and Stacy both. I love my two new sisters so much. I know sisters, just two goofy head brothers. <laughs> Father God, I thank you so much for her. I ask that you would touch her, strengthen her. Father God, God, I ask that you would touch your precious husband right now where he's at. At this very moment where the enemy wants to come in and bring discouragement and doubt and fear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask peace, joy. I ask that you would refresh his, his body. Father God, that you would encourage him at this moment. You've got this. You've got this. Everything he's concerned about, everything that she's concerned about, you've got this. Nothing yes. is too yes. difficult for you. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing is too difficult. And I praise you, God that you are moving, that you are strengthening her. I thank you so much, God, for her and her husband. God, the love that they have for the people that are here. They both are intercessors. God, I just praise you for them. Lord Jesus, she is not leaving the same that she came. She is not leaving the same as she came. She's going to leave with strength and joy and peace right now. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Their finances, God, open the windows of heaven. 
I pray for work beyond what her husband can handle. Father God, that he's going to have to hire other people to help him. Father God, I just thank you for the blessing that is coming right now in the name of Jesus. I give you all glory and all honor, Father. You, you are able, God, to move in ways they never thought possible. And I praise you for that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Where's my Sherby at? Where's my, did my Sherby already go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I know it's getting late. Um, we're still here if you want prayer. I know that I'm just going to let, in fact, I'll let Stacy take over from here. Oh, Brenda's going to take over from here. Okay. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for this night. Lord, and if there's anyone who needs prayer and they didn't want to come up in front of a bunch of people, God, I pray that they would stay and that they would come for prayer. God, if they haven't accepted you or if they need healing or just a touch from you, Father God, Lord, I just thank you for this night and the opportunity just to be here. I just give you all praise, glory, and honor as that you would be with each person. Bless them and their family. Draw each and every one of us, Father God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.